All right, ladies, this screencast is going to conclude our last few notes of Chapter 8, so we can move on to Chapter 9. Um, and these events will focus on just some of the first things that Thomas Jefferson encounters as president. We know he got elected in 1800. We'll be talking about his presidency even more so in Chapter 9, but we'll talk about some of the early things that happened in his presidency, starting with the Haitian Revolution. So um, you may recall, like, Haitian referring to the island of, um, or the nation of Haiti, which is part of the island of Hispaniola. Um, the Haitian Revolution is a slave rebellion that took place on the French-controlled Caribbean colony of Saint, uh, Saint-Domingue, um, as spelled on the screen. So Haiti and Saint-Domingue are in the same region, but it was mainly called by the French Saint-Domingue at the time. Um, the slaves of the island on the French-controlled west side will rise up and declare their independence from France. The Haitians pledged to live free and independently. That phrase really echoes, you know, the American Revolution and what we know about that. But in spite of the Haitians kind of basing their revolution on um, the American actions they took in the American Revolution, there is a strong lack of support um, from the American gov government who uh, thought this revolution was way too radical um, and could potentially result in a slave uprising within the U.S. So just because... Um, you know, they're kind of echoing American sentiments doesn't mean the American government's going to support every revolution, you know, that continues to happen post-American revolution. So, you know, revolts basically result, um, the revolt results eventually in Haitian independence. Um, the French did try to uh, quell the rebellion, and although they do capture some of the rebel leaders, they aren't able to squash the rebellion as a whole. So, um, there is like kind of a, you know, a um, rebel victory here. Um, the black leader, um, Jean-Jacques uh, Dessalines, I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I did not take French. I apologize. Um, Dessalines, uh, he secures victory and he declares independence for all of Haiti. So he's kind of considered the hero of this um, rebellion. Though Thomas Jefferson is the author of the Declaration of Independence, he will not publicly and officially recognize Haiti as a truly independent republic. Um, again, Americans actually fear that this successful slave uprising in, you know, San Domingue could potentially result in a slave rebellion in the U.S. So this um, Haitian revolution will actually result in stricter laws being placed on blacks um, in the United States, both slaves and freedmen, um, which is unfortunate but true. The other important concept to be aware of is the Supreme Court case, Marbury versus Madison. Um, I'm not going to make you <laughs> write down all the inner workings of Marbury versus Madison because the reality is it is uh, very complicated um, in terms of like law studies. And if you do want to pursue a law degree, you will definitely learn about Marbury versus Madison in much strict detail. Um, I myself need you to know the significance of this case, and that is the fact, of course, that um, Marbury versus Madison established the Supreme Court's right of judicial review, um, and judicial review is the fact that the Supreme Court gets to decide if a federal law is constitutional, and they get to overturn laws that they determine are unconstitutional. Um, that is what you need to know about them. Marbury versus Madison case. I will give you some background just for the context, but you don't have to write this down. So, um, obviously, with the election of 1800, Jefferson won, the Democratic Republicans are in, and the Federalists are out. However, in his last days as president, John Adams, before he, you know, is, you know, steps down, gives a seat to Jefferson, he appointed several Federalists to um, the position of federal judge, okay? So y'all know that federal justices are appointed for life. They have life terms, and it's the president who gets to make, you know, judicial appointments. So that's a privilege of the president because even though they no longer have their role as leader, they kind of leave their mark um, behind, politically speaking. So he makes sure to, like, you know, appoint these this list of federalist judge, like, on his way out. Um the appointments were made in time, but they were not all processed before Jefferson came into office. And so um, 
Jefferson will say that they were invalid, and his Secretary of State, James Madison, will refuse to process the paperwork. Okay? It's, you know, it's the Secretary of State's role to kind of help the president with some of this official, you know, documentation. So um, James Madison, who's a fellow Democratic Republican, and Jefferson's kind of Secretary of State, is basically going to not fully see that all the Federalists are put into power. Well, one of those would-be judges is William Marbury. And he's a bit upset because he feels like he's been out, you know, outrun um, the fact that he was appointed by President Adams but doesn't actually get to see that come to fruition. He will basically sue um, James Madison and the court will, the case will go all the way to the Supreme Court in the case Marbury versus Madison. And he will argue to the Supreme Court that they have the right to force Madison to overturn or, I'm sorry, to turn over the paperwork and instate, you know, William Marbury as an actual Supreme Court justice. Um, however, the justices of the Supreme Court, including Chief Justice John Marshall, will review all of the paperwork, and they will actually, and they will review the Constitution, and they will determine that they, in fact, do not um, have the legal right to instate William Marbury as judge. They also declare that there was a certain judicial law called the Judiciary Act um, that, you know, Marbury was arguing this law specifically gave the Supreme Court the power. Well, they actually found part of the Judiciary Act unconstitutional and voided it altogether um, because they reviewed the Constitution and were reviewing this law in the process of determining what happened to Marbury, they were indirectly giving themselves the power of judicial review. So it's not so much about what decision they made in the Marbury versus Madison case in terms of does Madison or Marbury, does Marbury become a judge? None of that matters because they say he doesn't become a judge. But because they reviewed the Constitution and legal laws, federal laws, to make that determination, they instead gave themselves an additional power known as Judicial review, and if you're not confused yet, I'm surprised because I sometimes get confused even talking about it. So um, we'll discuss this now. If you have any questions, write them down. Thank you very much.